I'm Darren Kitchen and this is Land Turtle Basics. Today we're going to be unboxing our Land Turtle and getting it set up for the first time. And here it is. It looks just like a USB Ethernet adapter. In fact, it works just like one as well. The difference being it's actually a, a, a smart USB Ethernet adapter, if you will, that runs Turtle modules that will let us do some amazing things like remote access, man in the middle. We can do some network intelligence gathering. It's really great for penetration testers, systems administrators, tech enthusiasts alike. And we're going to go ahead and get this set up using Windows. I have a couple of virtual machines here. The setup procedure will be very simple similar in Linux or Mac, but I wanted to show the Windows side first because it does not have a native SSH client, so it's the only one that, that's a little bit more complex, but this will be pretty easy. So the only download you'll need is yourself a copy of PuTTY. If you're using you know, uh, Linux, for example, of course, you already have SSH. Just type in SSH and then the IP address of your choosing. So. With that said, let's understand a couple of basics about the LAN turtle before we get going. First of all, uh, let's appreciate the fact that this really is a device with two Ethernets. Now, it does, I know it doesn't look like that, but once you're on the inside, uh, you'll notice that you have, similar to any other embedded Linux system with Ethernet, ETH0 and ETH1, two independent Ethernet interfaces. And by default, these guys are bridged, which means that it's going to allow the internet traffic, the network traffic, whatever have you, to run between these two. And I, I say that because it's not obvious at first because this USB port here. This USB plug is actually not only powering the device, but it is also an Ethernet uh, adapter. In fact, it's a generic Realtek Ethernet adapter, as you'll see when you plug it in for the first time. And I, I say that because we should understand the, the direction that things are going, if you will. So first of all, the by default, the USB side, that Ethernet connection, is going to be uh, the DHCP server. And it will offer to whatever host machine you plug it into, it will offer an IP address. Uh, by default, it's in the 172.16.84.x range. And likewise, the actual, you know, uh, the actual Cat5, Cat6, you know, your 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 normal Ethernet plug here on the back. This is by default going to be looking for an IP address from a DHCP server. So this is the client side where it will want to accept an IP address from the LAN that you drop it on. That said, you can of course set both of the sides up for static if that is the configuration that you need. It's fairly simple, but out of the box. This side is going to give an IP, and this side is going to get an IP. So with that, let's go ahead and get it plugged in. I already have one plugged into my system. We'll virtually attach it to the Windows machine here. And the boot up, I'll just show you using a USB battery pack. Again, USB power means it can you know, run off just about anything that's USB. So what you'll notice is immediately you get the green light turns on that indicates the power and then the boot up sequence is going to start that's a 30 second boot up sequence and you'll notice it by the uh, blinking amber LED so I already have one plugged in here let's go ahead and get it onto our system so in this VM I will choose removable devices and you'll notice it shows up as a Realtek 10100 LAN and we will choose connect and our normal driver installation here and with the default driver installed we can go ahead and SSH into the device and get it set up with the latest version of the software so for that we will of course need putty putty is a open source and free SSH client for Windows go ahead and download this and what we want to do is very first under window and translation we want to switch from UTF-8 to ISO 8859-1-1998. Just go ahead and do that. The difference being, uh, by choosing this, the ANSI graphics will actually look better. Otherwise, you might get some garbled stuff. It won't actually change any of the uh, handling of the device, but it will look a little bit better. So you may want to save that as a profile, and I'll show you how to do that now. Enter in our IP, 172.16.84.1, and I'm going to go ahead and name this turtle and hit save. And now, for many time, I can just go ahead and double click Turtle here. I will accept this signature. I will log in as root and the default password SH3LLZ. 
First time ever logging into this, we're going to be prompted to create a new password. And we're greeted by the main land turtle menu. Go to use the arrow keys to navigate, enter, goes in, escape goes back, go to config. And at this point, we will be able to check for updates, but not, of course, until we actually plug Ethernet cable into the back of our land turtle. Plug an Ethernet cable from your network, something providing DHCP, something providing an internet connection. And once that cable's been plugged into the uh, land turtle, we can go ahead back to our menu here and choose check for updates. And this downloads the latest version of the software, installs it. Some things to keep in mind while it installs, it does wipe the entire device. So if you had previously set one up and you have some special stuff on it, you'll want to back those files up off of it. Also keep in mind that whenever it updates the latest firmware and downloads and installs that, it's gonna go ahead and reset the password back to that default SH3LLZ. This process takes about five minutes, so uh, just sit still. The uh, connection here, you'll see, it'll download the upgrade file and it validates the file. And it says, do not unplug the land turtle. It takes about five minutes and we'll disconnect. We get disconnected, that's expected. It says this session, right here, it says this session will now close. And there we go. The LED has stopped blinking because it's finished booting up. And in just a moment, you'll see a special blink pattern indicating that the computer to which it's connected has received an IP address from it. And there it is. Blink, 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 blink. The second blink is a little longer than the first. It's on, off, and then long on. And there we go. And after that, just go back to regular network activity. And that's it. Now we're updated. So for more videos like these, check out landturtle.com, and I'll see you there.